Hi friends, continuing with the fluid therapy. Today I will talk about a special fluid called potassium chloride. First is the disclaimer. This video is made for educational purpose only and information provided here should not be used as an alternative to healthcare professionals diagnosis or treatment of any person or animal. There is no endorsement for any brand or company. Potassium chloride or KCL injection is usually available as 10 ml, 10 ml ampule with strength of 15%. So 10, 10 ml of ampule usually contains 1.5 grams of potassium chloride which is equivalent to 20 milli equivalent of potassium. Friends, potassium is crucial for neuromuscular function mostly found inside the cells at is, as it is a important intracellular cation but its presence in the extracellular fluid is also important. Kidneys they can't fully retain the potassium and they lose about 20 milli equivalent of potassium daily in the urine even when the levels are low. To prevent hypokalemia Potassium supplementation is necessary in maintenance fluids. In patients with diarrhea, vomiting or the patients who use diuretic, both sodium and potassium are lost in the urine and the kidneys they usually retain the sodium at the expense of potassium and these patients usually have hypokalemia. So potassium chloride is added to various potassium free fluid as a supplement to prevent the hypokalemia. Friends, potassium chloride increases the potassium level in the body when it is given either as an injectable form or orally. Most potassium is found inside the cell, especially the muscle cells where it helps to maintain cell tone and membrane potential. In heart and nerve cells, Potassium helps in repolarization and preventing the abnormal heart rhythms that is arrhythmias. Both hypokalemia or hyperkalemia can disrupt the heart function and can lead to life threatening arrhythmias. Potassium imbalances rarely affect the central nervous system though we have seen that uh, sodium disturbances can have a predominant effect on the CNS in the form of seizures, coma, altered sensorium, etc. The FDA currently approves potassium chloride use in the following formulation and the available formulations are extended release tablets or capsule, injectable forms, oral solution, powder for oral solution, uh, IV preparations of potassium chloride they increases the serum potassium level by 0.25 milli equivalent per liter for every 20 milli equivalent administered dose. For mild hypokalemia that is when the pot serum potassium is between 3 to 3.4 milli equivalent we usually give potassium chloride by oral route as 75 milli equivalent daily. For moderate hypokalemia, that is when serum potassium is between 2.5 to 2.9, we give 100 milli equivalent of oral potassium chloride daily. Patients with severe hypokalemia in home, the serum potassium is less than 2.5 milli equivalent per liter, or patients with symptomatic hypokalemia, we usually give potassium chloride as an intravenous infusion. High doses of intravenous potassium chloride that is over more than 10 milli equivalent per hour if these high doses are to be administered to a patient we should always use central line with cardiac monitoring. Fred's indications for the use of potassium chloride are prevention of the hypokalemia in patients on maintenance fluid therapy. Also, it is used 
for treatment of the hypokalemia which i will be discussing in next coming slides maintaining the proper potassium level in peritoneal dialysis fluid achieving the cardiac standstill during cardiac bypass surgery and important considerations are normal adult potassium requirement is 60 mg per day and improper use that is underdose or overdose can lead to hyperkalemia and cause can cause cardiac arrest and sudden death the basic rules or principle which we should follow while giving acl injection never give direct iv potassium chloride injection we should always dilute the potassium chloride in infusion fluids never add more than 40 mg of potassium per liter of fluid and never infuse more than 10 mg potassium per hour however if it is to be given for more than 10 mg per hour we should use central line and also never mix potassium chloride with isolate m because both have higher potassium content whenever we are giving potassium chloride as a injection we should always monitor ecg and serum potassium levels the specific conditions where we may use potassium chloride they includes diabetic ketoacidosis as we know that diabetic ketoacidosis usually presents with hyperkalemia due to associated hyperosmolarity and underlying insulin deficiency this finding is usually deceptive in diabetic ketoacidosis what we see is total body potassium actually decreases when administering the insulin to move excess glucose from the blood stream into the intracellular compartment whenever we give insulin in dka patient we should always check serum potassium levels if these these serum potassium levels are low then we should first correct the serum potassium level and then we should administer the insulin because we know that whenever the insulin is given the excess glucose from the blood stream goes into intracellular compartment and all potassium also moves intracellularly so the hypokalemia will result from the insulin treatment and whenever we are going to give insulin in patients with dka we should always check potassium chloride sorry serum potassium level if they are adequate or more then we should first uh, if they are low or normal then we should first supplement it with potassium chloride injection then we should give injection insulin in patients with kidney diseases as we know that kidney they play important role in potassium handling most potassium reabsorptions occurs in the proximal convoluted tubules and loop of henle so the potassium secretion begins at the distal convoluted tubule the collecting duct may secrete or reabsorb potassium based on the input from the chemical messenger that is aldosterone tubular delivery of the water and sodium and serum potassium status if there is any defect in the aldosterone production or deficiency or any tubular injury or any change in serum potassium level all these pathologies they will influence the how much potassium could be retained or excreted for example tubular pathologies like genetic channelopathies like barter syndrome renal tubular acidosis they may cause hypokalemia because of excessive potassium excretion and in such condition we may require the potassium chloride supplementation patients with hyperaldosteronism may require potassium chloride because aldosterone is a mineral corticoid hormone it signals the renal cortical ducts to both renin sodium retain sodium and water and secrete potassium and hydrogen ion conditions which promote excessive aldosterone activity 
will lead to excessive potassium secretion leading to hypokalemia so hyperaldosteronism because of aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma or any condition which affects the renin angiotensin aldosterone system that is renal artery stenosis these they will lead to hypokalemia and we may uh, administer potassium chloride in such patients the various drugs like diuretics except the potassium sparing diuretics corticosteroids and certain antimicrobials they promote the urine potassium excretion and in such patient we may require potassium supplementation the gastrointestinal diseases like vomiting diarrhea may require potassium supplementation during cardiac surgery the potassium chloride is given as a iv because it serves as a it serves to induce cardioplegia by interfering with the phase 0 of the cardiac action potential and this cardioplegia allows surgeon to operate directly on the heart while maintaining the tissue perfusion with extra corporeal life support the various adverse reactions seen with the potassium chloride with the oral preparation the patient may have gi irritation vomiting diarrhea ulcerative or stenotic lesions with prolonged use and injectable forms may cause the complication like phlebitis erythema thrombosis and rapid injection can cause mild hyperkalemia also we should always monitor the patient for these potential side effects and adjust the dose accordingly the various contraindications for the use of potassium chloride are we should never use injection potassium chloride without knowing the potassium status the medication which increases the potassium level like potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and ace inhibitors we should not use potassium chloride in patients who are using these drugs the various medical conditions with high potassium like levels like type 4 renal tubular acidosis chronic kidney disease rhabdomyolysis tumor lysis syndrome these conditions are usually associated with hyperkalemia and we should avoid using potassium chloride in such patients using potassium chloride with these medical medications or these conditions can leads to dangerous hyperkalemia and which can further lead to various arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death so when whenever we are giving potassium chloride we should always monitor serum potassium level at least daily for hospitalized patient who are on oral potassium chloride and more frequently for patients who are on intravenous potassium chloride especially if the levels are less than 2.5 milliequivalent per liter we should use continuous cardiac monitor to correlate symptoms with ecg changes we should be able to detect potential potassium imbalances like peaked t waves in hyperkalemia flattened t waves in hypokalemia so close monitoring will help us to ensure safe and effective treatment with potassium chloride friends the various toxicity seen with the administration of potassium chloride are the main concern is the that of hyperkalemia and because of hyperkalemia patient may have cardiac arrhythmias which are very fatal patient may have ascending muscle weakness and the patients who are given oral preparation of potassium chloride they can have nausea local mucosal necrosis if they are given iv in high speed or with high concentration and serum potassium level should always be monitored if they are more than 6 or 6.5 this can be very dangerous it can lead to sudden cardiac death so prompt recognition and treatment of the hyperkalemia are crucial to prevent the serious complications dr albert schwitzer has said that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the services of others with this i conclude my today's topic thank you
keep learning